the arrangement of the scripture here. First, the blind man. And he just, he said, Lord, have mercy. And he just said, I can, if you believe it, I can. You get it? Then he, they said, Lord, we believe. So he touched their eyes and said, Now, according to your faith, be it unto you, and they could see. Then they brought to him a man that was deaf and dumb. Now, today it would have been why this man, his, his nerves died in his ears, but Jesus called that deaf and dumb person a spirit, a devil that had deaf and dumb. Now, that's what it was. It was a spirit. The deaf and dumb spirit went out of the man. He could speak and hear when the spirit went out of him. You see what I mean? But you say that today, modern med med medical science laugh at you. They're all spirits. There's no such thing as that. But we Christians believe the Bible. The Bible said it was a spirit. Now, here's what takes place. There's a group I've noticed here somewhere this afternoon. Without the anointing on yet, I, I can't find them. But there's a, de a group of youths here. I trust to God that they're in the line tonight. At Portland, Oregon, I had a whole school to come. A whole unit. There was a little scout class, nine or ten of them. But a woman brought them, and each one, one right after the other, had prayer cards. They come to the platform, and all nine of them spaking and hearing when they left the platform and returned to their school. And the medical science pronounced them healed. Nine of them. The state senator sitting up in a balcony. And think this did. Now, if you can get the people to see that it's a deaf and dumb spirit. It's a spirit. Now, look here. Like I explained the other night, if something was cutting off the circulation in my hand, now there's only one way to ever get that out, and that is to release this. And then nature will take care of itself as long as that binding comes off. Well, that's the same way it is when an unseen force binds the ears or the tongue or some limb of a person. Now, you take people down. Now, it's hard to tell that person. Maybe a Christian, renowned, full of the Spirit of God, but yet bound. Now, the, someone made a remark in a paper not long ago, said, well, the people are all going down to the Branham Healing Campaign and getting uh, de-demonized. Said he, take, he, he detects all the demons and casts them all out. Now, that was a very flat thing for someone to say. But through ignorance, the man done it. If he had only just sat down and read the Bible a minute, he would find out. Now, he did that, but he said that because he didn't know any better. And if he did know better, God help his soul, because he's blaspheming the Holy Ghost, man, and there's never will be a forgiveness for that. See, whosoever blasphemes the Holy Ghost, it's an unpardonable sin. It can never be forgiven at all. Through all eternity, you're still lost forever. To speak it, you don't to speak against the Holy Ghost. So be careful. If you don't understand it, just don't say nothing. Just go ahead. Just let alone. Because, oh my, the things that I have seen happen, friends. But the Bible plainly states that they are demons. And they bind people. Look at the woman, the daughter of Israel. She was all bound over, bent over. And Jesus said, which one of you have enough? He said, how much more this daughter of Israel who's been bound by the devil? Stooped over. Perhaps arthritis. Today the medical doctors would say she had arthritis. That's a medical name. But Jesus would have declared it to be a devil. Today, cancer. Cancer is a medical name. Comes from the word crab, got what legs. They call it cancer. That's a medical name. Jesus would have said devil. Or anyone with a common school education knows that devil means tormentor. You got a tormentor your soul? See your pastor. You got a tormentor your body? That's what I'm here for. All right. Tormentor, devil. 
Epilepsy. That's the name the medical science gives today. When the man brought an epileptic to Jesus, he said, My son has the devil. And all times he throws him into the bar and into the water. See what it was? Falling, pines away, faints out. Epilepsy. He said, The devil throws him in. And Jesus cast the spirit out that come out of him. Is that right? The boy had the hardest fit of guess he ever had. He fell on the floor to slop and on the ground. They thought he was dead, but he said he's not dead. And he took him up. He just the devil showed him into that tantrum before he left. Tore him. Many times it happened. Today, if a Christian now, when they've come and the demon's been cast from them, and they take worse right away, they say, oh, I failed to get healed. You believe what's told you. Faith comes by hearing, hearing of the word. God's here with his gift confirming the word with signs following. See what I mean? One of the most marvelous things I can think of right now for just a little instant, just before coming, I'll, well, I'll, with, I'll to get something else so that it'll, it won't take you just more back in the first part of my ministry. I don't know what these ministers here tell of other things, but this is one thing that happened, and I know none of them here was with me when this happened. It's about the third meeting I ever had. And my wife came down. She, she's the most backward bad. She's worse than my mother. And you know she's bashful. And I told her, I said, I'm going to introduce you to the people tonight. She was afraid to come. <laughs> afraid I'd really do it. She's just bashful and backward. Timid little country girl. And she, uh, she came to the meeting. And she came down to meet me. And we've been having there at the tabernacle, all three or four hundred people, or a thousand maybe on a big night. But this time there was thousands there. The other night at the same meeting I was telling you about the newspaper, they carried where that woman had raised up from the dead to Patty Waldorf. The cancer dropped out of the man's neck, rolled across my foot. You remember me telling that a few nights ago? Arkansas Sun, I had the article, it's in this meeting. And Jones, uh, Frederick's across there, 26,000 people at the meeting attended. And so the newspaper reporter was sent his post to that pole when the cancer fell out of the man's neck and rolled across my foot. And I picked it up and laid it on a piece of paper. And he was afraid to put his hands on it. And he asked the man if he'd get the picture. He said, yes. So he took the picture of his neck where it dropped down, a minister. I seen a man one night with one on the side of his nose, looked like a great war, white, about like that. It's on the ends of it. My inside was real bloody and red, just like this was. And while I was praying for him, the cancer left and no one seen work. His face was as smooth. In the same meeting, I seen a woman coming with her handkerchief over her face. That's the meeting I said eight days and nights without leaving. And a woman comes, she had her handkerchief over her face like this. I thought she was weeping at long three or four o'clock in the morning. I felt all of her hand, and I thought she was weeping. I said, lady, why, the vibration is cancer. She moved her handkerchief down her nose, was eaten off. Young woman, about 38 years old, 40. So I said, oh, my. And she said, I've just been give up for the best of doctors. It's done too far gone now. They can't do it. They fought it with x-ray treatment, radium and everything, but it's too far gone. I said, you believe? She said, with all my heart. I said, will you take my word for what I say? She said, I will. I said, let us pray. And I prayed the vibration stop. I said, sister, there's only one thing that I can tell you, and you just have my word. The blessing of God is up on you. If you'll accept it and accept my word and believe that I've told you what God has said in my heart, you'll get well. And about two months after that, I was in a certain place, and there was a young fellow standing there, said, raised out of the meeting, he said, can I testify, Reverend Branham? And I said, what is it? Go ahead. I said, stay on. And he said, look here. Do you remember, so I'm an exterminator from, from uh, Texarkana. He said, my mother sitting here about two months ago come to you with no nose, but I want you to look at her now. This is perfect as she could be. That's right. And he said, I've got the doctor's statement right here, too, with it. And uh, where it was in her picture before and after, where it was of Satan. In the meeting, wife came down, and the baby was just a little bitty thing then, just about three, four months old. 
And we, we came down that night. We went, we went out the train to pick her up. I went to service that night. And before we got there, about two city blocks away, just like it's near the people. Those Arkansas people, is there, they, they some of them here, I'm sure. I've never had a meeting even in Canada. Well, there's somebody from Arkansas. Anybody here recently from Arkansas? Let's see your hand. That's right. I know. That's right. I know. See, I've never seen I was going to ask in London, England, and Sweden. Anywhere you go, you find people from Arkansas. Where I was over on the West Coast, and I said there one night, where I was having services for Charles Fuller at Long Beach in his auditorium. Brother Fuller said, Brother Branham, the people over here will never come to hear such fanaticism. I said, oh, they won't. No. Oh. Then you better preach the gospel while you're over here. I said, that's what I'm doing. He said, uh, well, he said, that divine healing. I said, Brother Fuller, I'll go on to Baptist Church, too. I know how you feel. <laughs> but I said, let me tell you something. He said, Brother Branham, everything over here is divine healing. I said, people won't come out. He said, first is that McPherson movement. Next is that... Fanatic Pentecost, he said, and all up and down the street here, everything's got divine healing. And he said, people won't come out. You're in that auditorium for nearly a thousand dollars. He said, you're going to be left alone. I said, look, Brother Fuller, I said, God will recognize his gift if it was in the middle of hell. See? I said, don't worry about that. He said, well, I can't advertise it. I said, I've asked you to, Brother Fuller. I just was talking to you. He said, come on down and kick your head in. I said, I'll be there. But I said, I'm telling you before, you'll be left without. We went down there that afternoon, Brother Moore and a group of us, had about 18, 20 hundred people sitting around. And when his group went out, he had his sermon. Now remember, Charles Fuller is a wonderful, God sent man. Real Christian man. Don't know where he ever got his program or not. He has the old fashioned revival hour, which is a very fine program. Wonderful, marvelous teacher, a good man. Age, he's getting pretty aged. But he's a good man. I believe he's a real Christian. And when we was leaving, Brother Fuller was going out, Brother Moore and I was standing there, and then I went his audience out, as we made a fine talk, and a lady came down and shook hands with him to give her heart to Christ, which is wonderful. He was going to start out, and there went all of his crowd out, fine, dressed people, you know, very highly educated. He was standing there telling them, just to believe right now and be saved, that's all. See? Then when his crowd went going out, here come my crowd in. Wheelchair, straight jacket. Uh, brother, it's a different thing when your faith has to buck something like that. Just preach, uh, speak into a crowd and tell them to raise up their hand except Christ. You turn pale looking. That night, they, so many people there, they stood plumb down on the side of the beach. A 5,500 auditorium would easily have them. They're standing out everywhere. I tell you, where the carcasses, the eagles will be gathered. You can depend. Notice. Life there that night when we looked and seen all that mass of people standing there, Jonesboro, she said, Honey, did all those come to hear you preach? I said, No. They come from the east and west. They come from the north and south, the lands of far. The feast with the king to dine as his guest. I said, They're children of the king. I said, They're not here to see me, honey. They're here to see Jesus. She said, well, how will you ever get to the auditorium? I said, there'll be man to meet me at the bonding hill here. I looked at that crowd, and I said, raised up my hand. I said, dear dying lambs, thy precious blood shall never lose its power to all the ransomed church of God. Be saved, just men no more. The gospel is the greatest drawing card the world's ever had. That's right. Though preached in its simplicity, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. That's true. A lady that afternoon had been blind. She walked out and she seen the trees and things. She went over there to the graveyard and looked up the tombstones where some of her people had been buried. Years since she'd seen them. So four men, I never seen what became of the wife after that. They was pressing it in towards the crowd. There's probably 2,000 people standing against the door right then. And so we finally squeezed through the crowd until we got on the inside. And I hadn't slept. I was just so weary. I lost about 28 pounds of weight. And I was pressing into the crowd, them great big strong fellows pushing me through. And I got up on the platform. There's 18 or 20 stretcher cases sitting right along like that. And sitting right here was a little girl. She had two burglar cases. Her nurses was with her. And I just got to the platform. I started.
started to look down, and I could just feel the vibration coming. There had been a great thing happen there that afternoon. There's a lady come across the platform, another instance. I took a hold of her hand. She had a female vibration. I said, you have a female trouble. She had a little boy on her arm. She said, yes, sir. I said, you believe me? She said, it was all my heart. I took a hold of her hand, and I began to pray. It wouldn't leave her. I said, sister, I don't understand why. It. Are you a Christian? She said, yes. And I looked at her. There it moved down. The vision began to move. I remember that woman standing there was told of living untrue to her marriage vow four days before that, before the argument. 20,000 people were there. And she started crying. The man behind her was her husband. He jerked around and said, what's this? You see why I had to pray off? What's this? She said, darling, I'm sorry. And just, I just let myself and moved over on him and told him of the same act with his bookkeeper and the car they were in and where they were at. He turned white said, brother, what must I do? I look, he looked at her and he reached his hand out and said, darling, I've been a rat. He said, if you forgive me, I'll forgive you. We'll start life anew right here before God's people. She said, I forgive you. And they put the little boy between them and hugged one another, knelt down on the floor and gave their hearts to God. Reverend Richard D. Reed of Jonesboro, Arkansas, baptized them in Christian faith the next morning. They were added to the church. That's the way the Lord works. Truly. Now, when I was at the platform, this little girl was looking. I looked up at her. I looked down to her, rather, she's looking at me. I kept seeing someone standing to my right, kept motioning their hands like that. I looked down there, and I seen some people rejoicing. There'd been a blind man come up and Kenneth was healed that night before that, and he was going on his road home, been drawing a blind pension for 12 years. And he was healed. I asked God to bless him. I said, do you believe? He said, with all my heart. I said, go on rejoicing, testifying of your healing. They led him out to an old Ford. He started up the road about a hundred and something miles up Kennett, Missouri. And he was going up the road, praising God for his sight, just as blind as he could be. All at once, he screamed. He said, stop the car. I see the light. He jumped out of the car and up and down the road. He went jumping and screaming. He went into Kennett, just, uh, uh, the Catholic Church was having mass. Put his cane up in the air and his hat on there. He walked down to the Catholic Church screaming. I'm healed, I'm healed by the glory of God. Out into the Methodist church, he went up and down the street. He really swam the country there. They were testifying everywhere. His healing. Looking out to one side, I seen a man motion his hand like this. And I thought it looked like an ambulance driver. He had on a blue-looking uniform. I said, are you motioning for me, sir? He said, yes, sir. He said, Brother Branham, but I brought my patient down from Kenneth, where the blind man was healed this morning. He said, and I got to make another trip tonight from the hospital and said, I think my patient's dead. We had to have a house doctor there. There's so many sick things. You have to have a house doctor. We couldn't find him anywhere, but I think my patient's dead. Won't you come to her? And I said, brother, I'd like to go, but how could I get through that crowd? There's probably two or three thousand people between here and there that had a role reserved for Amos out there. Many of them, 18 or 20 of them, sitting in that row. I said, well, I, I couldn't get out there. Four men stepped down out of the balcony. Said, we'll take you, Brother Bram, if you wish to go out. I said, well, if you'll sing a hymn while I'm gone or something. One of the ministers stepped up to the microphone, and they started me through the crowd. Oh, my, I'm pushing people, crying and begging. Oh, you know. They got out through the ambulance. They opened the door. He stepped to the door, and one side that I shall never forget. Sometime when I get alone up in the mountains, I sit down and think these things over. Now I don't have time, Harley. And there was a dear old Arkansas brother, very typical, old faded out, blue shirt on, been washed many times. His hat sewed the top of it with twine wrapping card. His shoes, the soles of the top off, he was kneeling down on the floor, ripping his hat, he needed to shave real bad, and the tears rolling down his face. And God, give me mother back. I looked laying in there, there laid a woman, with her mouth open, her eyes. Open also, set back. And uh, the intern said, Here's Brother Branham. 
You turn around and said, oh, Brother Branham, but how I, I want what she wanted us to get. But she's a good woman, Brother Branham. But she's helped. She's raised five children. So they're all grown and married. So now we said we had her little place and said, she, we picked blackberries last summer and said, together and said, she made some quilts. And said, she's been so bad with cancer. Said, they give her up. And we sold the blackberries yesterday in some of her quilts so we could have the money to pay the ambulance to bring us down here. But she wanted to see so bad, and she's gone, Brother Bram. It was her last request. I've done all I could do, sir. And I said, God bless you, Dad. I put my house. I said, you'll see her in a better land, then. He said, yes, she was a Christian, Brother Bram, but, oh, she wanted to see you so bad. I said, all right. I said, took a hold of her hand. Now... I do not know where the woman was gone or not. God is, I think she was in a coma. I'm not sure. Although I couldn't feel her heart. But now listen. Then, I put my hand on her. She felt cold. I put my hand on her hand. felt cold. And it looked like muddy looking stuff had run from her eyes. Or she had her false teeth taken out and her lips was caught in her mouth sitting back like that. face real thin. And she was, had her eyes set right back like that. She was laying that way. I took a hold of her, I shook her. Seemingly, she was dead. Whether she was, I do not know. God's my judge, I couldn't say. But when I took a hold of her right hand, there went that cancer. Well, I knew then. I think now, if the woman had been dead, the cancer would have left too. Now, I, I believe it would. Now, that's the reason I think that she was in the corner. So I was holding her hand. It was hitting, I could hear it, feel it hitting like that, turning, hitting. So then I said, Dad, let's pray. And he said, all right, Brother Bram. He got down on his knees and began to call him, saying, God, why did you let her go like that? Why couldn't she just live a little while longer? I asked her, hearing pain, I started crying myself. I couldn't help it. Poor old fellow. I looked at him, his old hands was raising up to God, his evil and trembling. And I said, Heavenly Father, you who brought again Jesus from the dead, I said, be merciful, comfort a brother's heart. I kept on, I kept on praying in this scream in the top of his voice. And I said, Father, be merciful and heal her. And the vibration of the cancer stopped. Well, Satan said to me then, she died then. Well, I just kept holding on. I said, Lord, I believe that you brought up Lazarus from the grave. I believe you give the woman, the widow, her son again. I believe you laid your hands upon Jairus' daughter, and she came to life. Now, you're here. You can spare her life. And I'm just looking to you, Father. I pray that you would hear me like that. And I felt her grip my hand. I know she's alive. Then. I just felt, just quit praying and watch her. He's crying so much, he didn't hear me cease praying. I looked, and I seen this skin on her forehead begin wrinkling. I know life is in the woman. I just sat there a little bit on the side of the bed. In a few moments, she was going to look around. She said, how do you do? He had done got out on the floor with his head on the floor just to cry in the ambulance. And I said, how do you do? She said, who are you? I said, I'm Brother Brand. She said, oh, you are the set up. And she sat up like that. He raised up and looked at her. He said, mother, mother. And he threw his arms around her and began to hug her like that. And they were just screaming both of them together, sitting in the ambulance. I started to go out the door, and the driver said there, the intern and the driver, he said, Brother Bram, you couldn't get out that door. He said, they're just packed against there, so I'll tell you what I'll do. So I sent those men all around, way back in the parking lot, standing full of people, and some of them hadn't left there for eight days, this drizzling rain. And so they had, they just sat right in their seats, anyone on the inside stayed there. They let somebody go out and get them a hamburger or something, come in, they'd eat right there, they wouldn't move, they stayed right there, slept right in their seats. And he, he started to unbutton his coat like this and hold it back at the door like he's taking his coat off. So now when I do that, you go out the other side, and they're going to meet you down there at the end. I said, all right. I looked like a hypocritical deed, but I just couldn't. I had to do it. I couldn't get back to the auditorium. And I went out the side like that, the other side, which is near the fence. I went down along that row of ambulances. I'm way down to come around the end of the alley, come into a big parking lot, just about as far as three, four times this tent. And it's just milling full of people. Well, I thought, where are those people? And no one knew me. They hadn't seen me back there. So I started pushing through, trying to get up towards the door. I thought maybe they'd be up there towards the door. And the big lights out there. And I, I was going pushing through like this, and everybody hollered, sit down. Quit pushing. 
I just kept on going, you know, and I quit pushing. And I just kept on going. As you all, I, it's a big fellow standing there whittling with his knife. I kind of stuck up against him like that. I said, pardon me. He said, I said, quit pushing. I was afraid he was going to push, so I, I did stop. And so I said, yes, sir, excuse me, sir. I stood there a little bit. He looked down at me. Kept on whittling, talking to the other fellow. I looked at him a little bit. So he got his head turned good, and I looked around to see where the door was. Quite a distance yet to the door. I couldn't see no one coming for me yet. So I heard a cry. I heard somebody hollering, Daddy! Daddy! Oh, Daddy! Most pathetic cry. I looked around to see where it was. Coming down through the audience come a well-dressed colored girl. Just as blind as she could be. Her eyes were just as white with cataract nearly as my shirt. She was coming along like this. Nobody noticed her. Coming along like I heard, Daddy! Oh, Daddy! And I watched her and I thought, well, now, isn't that amazing? Look like somebody helped that poor girl, regardless of what they think about it. They already helped that girl some way. I thought, I believe I'll help her. I didn't see no one, so I started moving out to her and I thought, you know, maybe the Lord will heal her. So I began to think about that. And I heard her crying. And I, she was crying. And I walked out and I thought, I'll just try her faith, just get a conversation with her. I, every which way she was going, I'd make myself get right in her way. And finally she bumped into me. And she said, excuse me, sir. And I said, that's Southern talk, you know, sir. And I said, yes, ma'am. And she backed off. She said, daddy. I thought, I'll just see what kind of faith you have. That looked like a hypocrite again to do that. And I said, uh, what do you want? She said, sir, I lost my daddy. I can't find him nowhere. I said, look like you're blind. said, yes, sir, I was blind. Nice talking lady. And I said, well, uh, I don't see any more colored people around here. I said, where are you from? She says, I was from Memphis. I looked over and I seen all that bunch of chartered buses sitting here. I seen one of them had Memphis on it. I thought, well, I could get her over to that bus anyhow. So I said, uh, if the people didn't begin to recognize it coming in. So I said, well, what are you doing over here? Just to test her faith. She said, I come over to see the Gila. I said, the what? She said, the Gila. And I said, you don't believe that, do you? She said, oh, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> I began to feel something there in my heart. And she said, I listen to all the good radio programs. She said, this morning I heard people testifying from this place that had never talked before in their life. And she said, I heard of a blind man from up in Missouri that received his sight. She said, sir, I come over to receive my sight. <laughs> I thought, oh, I'm a hypocrite, Lord. I said, why am I bump into her like that? I thought, well, I'll go on through with it. I said, do you believe in that? She said, yes, sir. She said, I believe it with all my heart. I said, in the day, how'd you come to go blind? She said, when I was a little girl, the doctor told me I had cataract. And said, he said, when they got ripe, now, I don't know what ripe means yet, but said, when they got ripe, he would take them out. And said, now that they got ripe, he said, they done went down and wrapped around the optical nerve of my eyes. If he had pulled the cataract, he'd pull my eyes out. But my only hope is to get to the man, and they tell me this is his last night here, and I can't even get near the building. And I've lost my daddy, and I don't know what to do. Nobody will help me. She said, could you help me to the bus, sir? I said, yes, ma'am. But I said, first, about this healing. I said, did you hear that man testify about that angel coming down from heaven? Said, yes, sir. I said, do you believe that? She said, with all my heart. I said, in the day when we've got all the best medical science and the best doctors we ever had, and you mean to say that God Almighty would do something like that? She said, yes, sir, I believe it. And I, now, she couldn't see me. She was totally blind. Had been since she was 12 years old, and she was about 20 then, I guess. And, said, and I said, are you totally blind? She said, yes, sir, I couldn't tell daylight from dark. But I hadn't for years. And I said, well, look. You, well, well, I said, well, we got good doctors. She said, but, sir, they can't help me. She said, I'll tell you what I'll do. She said, if you'll get me into the building where that man's at, I'll find my daddy after that. Oh, my. That was too much for me. I couldn't stand that. She said, you get me to where he's at, and I'll find my daddy. She said, there's a blind man been blind 12 years this morning. 
received his sight and said, Sir, won't you help me get where he's at that I might receive my sight? I thought of poor old blind Fanny Crosby. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. On others thou art calling, do not pass me by. And I, my heart was just a breaking. I said, look, lady, perhaps I'm the one you want to see. And friends, I'll never forget. Those hands grabbed me by the lapel like that. She said, is you the healer? I said, no, I'm Brother Bram. I said, Jesus is the healer. And she helped me like that. She said, oh, don't pass me, have mercy. I said, sister, of course I would do all I could as a man. And I believe Jesus will hear our prayer. I said, do you believe him? She said, with all my heart, sir. I said, now let me have your hand. You think she'd turn loose in my coat? No, sir. She's holding right there. She said, I isn't going to turn you loose, sir. She said, I said, well, look, sister, let me have your right hand, and you can hold with your left, but I want to feel the vibrations of those cataracts know whether they're dead or not. I finally got her to let me have her hand. I took a hold of it, and there they were. I said, now, so that nobody will notice this, I said, you bow your head now. Don't raise your head, though I tell you to. And believe with all your heart. She said, I do, sir. She bowed her head. Here's the way I was praying. I'll never forget the way I prayed. I said, Heavenly Father, some 1,900 years ago, there was an old rugged cross dragging down through the streets of Jerusalem. It was dragging out the bloody footprints of the barrier. On the road up to Golgotha, his little weak, frail body fell under the load. Along came Simon, the serene, colored man, Ethiopian, picked up the cross and helped him bear the cross. But Father, I'm sure you understand. And here's one of his daughters tonight, staggered in darkness. Won't you help her? No more than said that, the vibration ceased so much. I said, now keep your head bowed, sister, just a moment. And she kept her head bowed. I waited a minute for the strength to look at her. I said, now keep your eyelids closed until you get your face about even with mine. Your judgment. I said, yes. I said, I feel real cool. I said, just don't open your eyes. What you got about even? I said, now receive your sight for Jesus. She opened her eyes. She said, oh, is that right? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, is that people back? She said, oh, Lord, I who was once blind can now see. And she screamed out. She fell forward, and the people began to notice. And here they come running together. And I started to run. I heard. I looked coming down just a little bit before I started playing. I seen the man pressing through the crowd, hunting for me. And I started towards them. Just as I started towards them, there was an old brother. I never will forget. He he had a, a club. He had a crooked foot. He was standing like this. He said, "I know you, brother Branham." He said, "I've been standing this rain for eight days." He said, "Tell me what to do, and God will back your words." I said, you with all your heart you believe? He said, with all my heart. I said, throw away your club and behold, in the name of the Lord Jesus. He threw his club away and made out a scream, and up in the air he went, jumped, down he come, just as normal as any man begins screaming. And friends, I started to push towards these men. There's no harm in saying this. When I first started, my brother gave me a suit to go out in. He had a wreck in port in several places. And my wife and I went out to the 10-cent store and got some of that patches you iron on with an iron, you know. Uh, I don't know what they are. And I sewed the pocket up where it was tore down here on the side, down along the side, took a needle in I'm not very much of a seamstress. So I sewed it up, and when I would go to meet ministers or anything, I shamed that ragged coat. So I'd hold it sideways and put my right hand down like this and shake hands with the left hand and say, well, I, excuse my left hand, but it's closer to my heart. See, just like that, just say that. Instead of letting them see that old ragged coat. But brother... When I was trying to get to that man, God bless their gallant hearts. They were pushing through there, trying to get their little babies, trying to touch that old ragged coat when passing by. And they're throwing down their crutches and people screaming and hollering, just going through trying to touch the old coat. Brother, it wasn't the old coat that done the healing. It was their faith in Jesus Christ that done the healing. And that same Christ that was at Jonesboro that night is here in Cleveland tonight to perform any miracle to do anything that faith will lie to replace.
required to be done. Do you believe that? Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I'm thinking of that glorious, marvelous night. That poor colored girl, make it up a few weeks later for pants, stomping in an airplane hangar. Someone walking up saying, you remember me, Brother Brown? Oh, God. Someday when it's all over and we gather to the other side. What a marvelous time it'll be to sit down with those redeemed. Here we are tonight, Lord, way across the country here in Cleveland, Ohio. Been across the blue water to the other land, down to the Navy. We're still struggling on, not weary of the way. Oh, God, believing you for all things. Seeing you here to heal the sick and the afflicted. Bringing this morning glorious power. Manifesting yourself in great healings, interpreting the hearts of the people, telling their diseases, the secret sins and thoughts of their minds, healing the paralyzed, the lame, the deaf, the dumb. Oh, Christ of God, this great night that will be history after a while, if thou tarry, help us now to move in with real faith. Grant it, Lord. May the people repent of all that's done that's wrong. Accept us now in the beloved, for we ask it in his name. Amen. Close tonight with prayer cards from S15 to S25. From S15 to S25, if you'll stand in line according to your number at my right and your left. Everyone else remains seated. Oh, isn't he wonderful? Glory. While the prayer line's being formed, believe now with all your heart. We'll wait first till we get some... You don't have to have a prayer card. That doesn't have a thing to do with it. That prayer card is merely to get people lined up. They give out a hundred each day. And when they do, I think it's one, 50 in the morning and 50 in the afternoon. They bring the prayer cards up, shuffle them out, hand them to each person, and they write down their diseases, and you bring it up, that's merely to keep you in line. That doesn't have one thing to do. God bless this couple coming here. All right, he's sure to perform any miracle, do anything that you believe that he will do. Just have faith in him, believe him. Now, right from the platform here, many, many times, many times, God heals the sick and the needy. God can reveal right here from this platform what you have need of if you'll just believe. Do you do it with all your heart? Have faith. You have faith and God has mercy. By his mercy, he'll heal you. Make you well. Leave with all your heart. Just ah, sh here it is. Well, you know what I'm trying to do right now, don't you? How many realizes that? I'm waiting for the anointing to strike me. That's right. When I feel it, I know it's here at the platform. Friends, God knows what's true. Sometimes I don't see it, but look while I explain it. It's just a pressure like in, the, like in midair. If it went this way, you could tell it. If it come this way, you could tell it's right. You could tell it's just like the form of a man. And now it's to my extreme back right here. And, and when he comes down over you, it just feels like you're... And when it comes down, and I, I look out over the audience, I can see things are happening. Then I can only speak just what he says. I can only speak just to tell what's wrong, what is. I watch close, try to try to get let him work through the people. Now while you're lining up back there, everyone just be real reverent, have faith and believe. 
trying to catch the little lad, but he's got his little face turned to mother. And the gentleman sitting right there, you with the brown shirt on. You have a back trouble, don't you? Is that right? You believe me as God's prophet? Would you obey what I told you to do? Stand on your feet and be healed, then. Jesus Christ makes you well. Amen. Amen. Uh, right. He sure will heal. You have a back and heart trouble too, don't you, brother, sitting there in that seat, big fella? Isn't that right? Stand up on your feet and be healed, and Believe Jesus Christ. Stand up. God bless you. Here, this brother sitting here, Esther. God bless you, brother. The lady sitting next to you is extremely nervous there. She's bothered with nerve trouble. Isn't that right, sister? All right, stand up. You believe it now? Accept it and be healed. Sister, you, you, if you're refusing food, you've had a stomach trouble or something sitting back there. Isn't that right? Stand up and receive your healing, too. Jesus Christ makes you whole. Go home and eat what you want to now. See you moving, washing your mouth and things like that. Go home and eat anything you wish to. Jesus Christ makes you whole. Have faith. Believe. Have God will grant to you. All right. Let the patient come. Now, everybody reverend. Now, just a moment. Everyone, be just as reverent as you possibly can. Give the prayer card to him. Or you've already got the prayer card. Everyone, be just as reverent as you can. Now, now you come forward, sir. Now, usually in this way, the thing when you're looking out on the audience, just imagine, it just feels like a thousands of people just, just pulling, just contacting you like that. See, you can't hardly segregate it out, what's wrong. But when you get them one at a time, where you can see them. Let's see your hands, sir. I have to see it some other way. You look this way, sir. And believe it's all as quiet as possible while Brother now, Bradham. It's something different from what I can't... You have a few troubles, inward troubles, but not... There's something, or you would be weeping like that, but just merely for that. And it's, I want you to look this way, and I, I'm not reading your mind, sir. I, I'm, I'm just trying to find out what's wrong with you. Yes, sir. And I want you to, do you believe that God will reveal to me what is wrong with you? You believe with all your heart. Yes, sir. I see what is wrong with you. You've tried everything in the world nearly to get well. You've been to doctors, everything has turned you down. It's a nerve condition. Isn't that right? That's right. Nothing can help you. You've been given up. But Jesus will help you now. You believe it? You believe it? Will you obey me as his servant? You want to be healthy and have all that weary and boomy and crazy feeling like you're losing your mind and things like that? I'll tell you where that started on the process, you see. But what really is doing it, it's a demon to haunt you. Isn't that right? You have no peace at all. Damn. It's like you just get gloomy feelings in there, isn't that right? Yes. Weary, don't sleep. Nervous, getting up. Isn't that right? How would I know that except God reads it? Yes, brother. Now, I'm going to ask Jesus to heal you and to make you well. You believe him with all your heart. Now, there's the things that no one would have known except Christ would be. Is that right?
And I believe that prayer faith is going to save me now. Do you believe it? Right. Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, thou art here to bless my brother. Oh, thou Son of God, who is able to reveal the very thoughts of our hearts, able to do all things, free this poor caged mortal. In a cage that he can't free himself, like an eagle in a cage beating his wings until his weary eyes fall backwards. Oh, Father, be merciful to him. Thy servant knows what he's suffering. Thou demon, tormenting his life, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, come out of the man. Now look here, sir. It's wrong. Now you're free. You go out of here, testifying, you feel all right now? Fine. Wonderful. Like, go out of here rejoicing, testifying. Now if I could tell you what happened to you when you was a little boy. Down through the age, down to where you are right now, the life that you live, the things that you've done, that was true, wasn't it? Every word true. Now I'll tell you what will be the results in the coming future. Go out of here, happy, singing, testifying, telling people God healed you. Forget you ever was nervous. Thirty days from now, you'll be a different man altogether. God bless you. Could you get the testimony? Could you hear what was going on? What was said? How many could hear it way back? About the big yellow dog when he was a little boy, chased him as a little boy, chased him across the street and up on the doorstep. And then the next thing that one is the life that he lived down when he was in his teens of age and down like that and on down to a few when he was brought into the church and the things he'd done and all about it and how it's been working. Who would know that except God alone? Is that right? Now what happened? I've seen the man go right straight back up in the air above me there. I've seen a little boy with a pair of brown knicker pants on being chased and pursued by a, a dog. And that's just how... Now the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ is here, friends. Be healed to make well... Any person that cheered to be healed. All right, little lady, you come forward. Now, everyone be just reverent as you can. If I'm not loud enough, you tell me, because when it comes down over me, the anointing, that how many have seen the picture? You've seen it, all of you seen the picture of it, haven't you? You mean there's people here who haven't seen the picture of it? It's been taken and examined by a government examiner. That's a table back there. Here, I believe it. Here it is when it was caught in the picture. Now, that is tested by the G. Edgar Hoover outfit of fingerprints and photography and so forth to be proven that it's perfect. The first time in all the world's history that a supernatural being was ever, was ever photographed. First time in all the world. George J. Lacey at the Shell building in Houston, Texas, was the one who had to examine it for two days. Did you notice he was licking and blazing and burning? And they sort of go before the world first. It had to be tested. That's not a trick photography or something. And we got the best that the United States has got. And he kept it two days. And his statement's right here. No picture can be given out until the statement goes with it. And there it is. The world right down before it, thousands of people. Right over where it was, a licking, flaming fire. Right around like, when I stand there testifying, I said, I tell the truth. And if I tell the truth, God will testify of me, for I testify of him. And if I do not tell the truth, God will not testify of me. I said, through signs and wonders, he testifies. I said, he can testify and about that time. Here he comes. And he testified. And there it is now. Demons have screamed it out. Unbelievers, scientists have to say it's true. Mr. Lacey looked at that. He said, well, it's been said the hypocrites of those lights that were around the saints and the Savior were just artist work. That they were there because it can't be doubted no more. That it's not psychology. Uh, optical lens of the camera won't take psychology. No, it's there. Here's the paper of it. We had time, we would write it. That's the way it comes into the meeting. That's the way it's been seen many, many times when it's baptizing hundreds down the Ohio River at the foot of Spring Street in Jeffersonville where thousands were black on the bank. And right at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I was baptized the 17th person. I started to pray. And thousands stand there looking. And down from the heavens came that scream whirling down like a big star in the distance. When he got close, it was that light, a pillar of fire. I think it's the same one that led the children of Israel in the days that went before Moses. And it's in the church today. It's here tonight. The same pillar of fire. When he told me, he said, as Moses was given two signs to vindicate his ministry, so will you be given two signs. And by these signs that people will believe. 
And there it is, I believe, it's the same angel of the covenant. And it came down when hundreds and hundreds stand there. People fainted and fell and everything. The papers carried great article. Mystic star appears over minister at 2 o'clock in the afternoon while baptizing. There it was. Friends, sell yourself down. The hour has come. There's been a lot of play in religion. There's been a lot of play in church. But the hour has come where God's calling out his people. That's right. And he's vindicating it by signs and wonders. And that's it. And here's a statement. Anyone's welcome to read it, share any time for anybody. And look at it. Paul George J. Lacey, you've heard of him. He's one of the Edgar Hoover outfits, one of the best there is in the United States. This hall then goes to the re- this picture goes to the religious hall of art. For the first time in all the world's history that a supernatural being was ever photographed. I say thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ. When that comes down, that's what does the, the work. Now, the, the Christian believes by the signs and wonders. Demons scream out. They testify that God knows that truth. And now God has came down, and so the scientists and the skeptics can't doubt no more. Brother, as sure as I'm standing this pulpit, this country is ready and ripe for judgment. That's right. I'm an American, and I love it. If the war breaks out, I'm ready to go. I had five brothers in the other war, four brothers I mean, and we're ready to go now. Yes, sir, this is the greatest nation there is under the heavens. That's I'm glad to be an American. That's right. And if it's worth, not, it's worth anything, it's worth fighting for, it's worth standing by. That's true. But, brother, when we are weighed in the balance and found wanting, when the gospel has been refused and turned down and talked about, as you sow, so shall you reap. Israel is God's favored people, that's right, but as they sowed, they reaped. We're bound to have a great time of judgment. The world is ready for it now and going to receive it. You mark my words, and then if that don't come to pass, you say he's a false prophet. We're going to receive judgment. I feel it in the spirit. All right, sister. Let's see your hand. Come this way. Now, the only thing I do, this sister, is just to contact you. Or is this a patient? Sometimes people are standing here, maybe they're talking or something. That's the reason I see my brother there keeps them lined up for so just a patient to talk. All right. God bless you. I look this way. The thing I'm doing. Now, this is not, I'm just, you're human. You have a spirit. And this is a gift to contact your human spirit. You are a Christian. Sir, you're a believer, a Christian believer with the Holy Spirit. All right. Now, look, in the Bible, I want to tell you. One time when Jesus' ministry just become very popular, and one of them was converted by the name of Philip. And he went for Nathaniel, his brother. And he brought Nathaniel down to where the prayer line would say was. And when Jesus saw Nathaniel coming, he said, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there's no God. Is that right? In other words, today he'd say, Behold, you're a real good Christian. Is that right? Now, that's what you are. True. And he said, Whence knowest thou me, Rabbi? said before Philip called you when you were under the tree. Is that right? That's what Jesus said to Philip. And Philip acknowledged and said, or Nathaniel rather, and said, you are the son of God, the king of Israel, didn't he? Now Jesus said, these things that I do, greater shall you. Is that right? Now when did I know you? When you're refusing food there at the table because of your stomach trouble. And it's left you now. You go on home and eat what you want. God bless you. Let's say praise the Lord, everybody. All right. Good evening, sister. You believe with all your heart? There's something wrong with you, of course, or you wouldn't be here. Now look this away, sister. You had several things wrong with you. You've been scared about one thing when it's wrong. 
Yes, I see something else, too. I see you have arthritis also, don't you? Do you believe me? You have to, don't you? You do. All right, you just remove your glasses, raise your hands up in the air, and say, give God thanks and praise, stomp your feet up and down for it's let you, and you can go on home hold these for souvenirs, sister, you're healed. God bless you. Let's say praise the Lord, everybody. All right, uh, come on, little girl, bring the little Oh, my sweet little thing. Oh, my, it's a little mute. Uh, or, that's both on, uh, it's death, anyhow. Huh? All right, bow your head, everybody. Oh, Jesus. Son of God, you who brought life to us. This dear little curly-headed angel. I'm thinking of my own little Rebecca, Lord. Think of my little Sharon that lays there. And here this darling little thing comes crying, leaning her little head over on my bosom. Oh, God bless this little girl. If you were here, you would lay your holy hands upon her, and every demon power would turn her loose. Jesus, help thy servant, Lord, as I challenge this enemy for this child. May I have power of faith to believe that will rebuke that demon from her. Satan, in the name of the Lord Jesus, turn her loose. He'll hold her. Keep your head back. Oh, Jesus, Son of God, author of life, giver of every good gift, send thy blessings upon this little girl and heal her of this ears, Lord. You're here to make her well. And this spirit of the devil has come to the little thing's ear. Thou art here to make her well. Now, demon, come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. There it goes. Looking Amen. Amen. There you are. You're normal and well now, honey. 
They praise the Lord. Raise up your hands and say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. There it is. God bless you. Let me run off. All right. All right. Come forward. How do you do, sir? Let's just give God praise. Go ahead. That's all right. Huh? Let's just rejoice in the presence of our Lord. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found.
something takes place. All right. You believe? All right. The arthritis you have left you. You can go off the platform. Raise your step down like this. There you are. Your key. You let me praise be to God. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday today. All right. Bring your patient on. Come on, sister. All right. Have faith. Everyone believing with all your heart. Do you? Right now, you would you accept him as your healer? Could you believe him? How's the back feel, brother? All right now, isn't it? It's done forever. Your faith saves you, dear brother. I seen that a few moments ago. Good evening, sister. You believe me? Would you accept me as God's prophet to believe that I know what God would have you to do? Would you do what I tell you to do then? All right, your your eyes is what's bothering you. Isn't that right? Now, tonight, when you go home, I want you, when you lay down, to put your hand over your eyes and say, Lord, help me. And in the morning, when you wake up, it'll all be gone. You'll, you believe that? All right, sir. God bless you and be with you. Let's say praise the Lord. Now, I want to have your testimony. When you come back, you come back and tell what happened. She's going blind. Her, all, the, the nerves in her eye are dying. Give her something to do so that she could believe and have faith, and God will grant it to her. Now, you do what I told you, and you come back tomorrow night. Let us see here from you. How many believe she's going to be perfectly normal? With all my heart. She, I believe it with all my heart. All right. Come on, sister. Bring the, uh, the patient home. All right. Of course, we see what the woman has in her hand. Right here, walking across the platform. She's already go to trust God. Now, the spirit of the devil is bound to her in her ears. In the name of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, leave them home. Amen. You hear me now? Amen. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Never left. No, there it is. All right, let's ask again. Our Heavenly Father, we ask you to be merciful to our sister, to heal her, to make her well. Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of the woman. Still holding 
You may raise your head and look. At the right here, I want to ask her a question. You got a chance. Huh? you reveal it to me. Now I ask you to be merciful and reveal or heal the woman, Father. Hear the prayer of your humble servant in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Satan, thou demon of deafness and trouble that bound this woman, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. It's still holding, sister. Now that's one to sell in time. Now, I don't know just what to do until God shows me. I'll have to wait to find out what he tells me to do. There's something wrong in the woman's life or some way God's a holy. I do not know. See, I can't say until he reveals it. Now, that shows the helpiness of me. See? All I can say is what he would tell me. I can just feel ever. I believe he'll tell me. Show me what it is. I'll try once more to pray for her. See, I'm looking right at the woman. I can't see a thing. She, I can see what's wrong with her. Here it is, it's vibrating. But I can't, there's nothing before me to see what's wrong with her life or anything, but for some reason, God's a holding this. I do not know. I've asked her, wrote here, does she believe? She said yes. I shall pray again. Our Heavenly Father, I ask you to be merciful. Grant the healing of this poor woman. But here death with this spirit, bound with this trouble, I ask you to heal her. Grant it, dear God. If there's anything that's wrong, I ask forgiveness and pray that you will make known tonight that she, what is wrong and why that this spirit doesn't leave her. If it's weakness of my own faith, forgive me. If it's weakness of her faith, forgive her. Then, Lord, hear the prayer of your servant and make this death spirit to leave her in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, it's still moving on her hand. Now, just a moment. I've got some more on the line. I'm going to have her sit here just a moment so I can get her behind me and start on with some of the rest of the prayer line. I can find out what's wrong with her. Now, you see how helpless the person is so God reveals it? Here she is standing here. I don't know what, what to do. I can't say until God shows me. See what I mean? How many understand? See? see? It isn't Brother Branham. If the, maybe that's what he's doing that far. That you see that it isn't me, it's him. Now, here it is. I can catch her disease here. See what it is. She has female trouble, kidney trouble, and death in both ears. And there, there it is. But now to make it leave her, that's her faith with God. See, that's all I can do. I'm going to ask her to set your distance. I don't want her to leave. I want her to stay here until it's over. Tell her to look towards me and pray. Now, everybody be reverent. We can see what's wrong with the woman. All right, come out of here. Now, audience, if you'll notice, look at my hand now. The same thing isn't wrong with the woman. Frankly, it's something like paralysis or something. I don't know. I'll have to find out first. It's something that hasn't got a germ disease. It growth on that woman's ears back there. But what this is here, I don't know. I'll have to find this by vision, if God will reveal it to me. If he doesn't, 
I, if he doesn't, I can't tell it. Now, if it isn't, I won't know nothing about it. And if I do know, I can't heal her. Healing comes from God. From God. Now, everybody just reverend. Now, you look just the way, sister, just a moment. I want to talk to you just a minute. To catch your spirit. And how long have you been serving him? Long time? Do you love him with all your heart? Do you believe with all your heart? Yes, ma'am. Look. You've had this trouble for some time. It's arthritis. Isn't that right? And you've, in the last year or so, you must have failed uh, quite a bit, haven't you? you? You have. You fell off some. And as I said, you've been falling off constantly. You're coming down. Isn't that right? I can see in a vision. Here about a year or two ago, you looked heavier and better than what you do now. You've been nervous too, haven't you, sister? Uh-huh. Isn't that the truth? Now, do you believe with all your heart that God will heal you? Everybody bow your head just a moment. Our Heavenly Father, I ask you to heal our sister standing here. Make her well, dear God. May this power of the devil that found our sister leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of the woman. All right, look this way now, sister. All right, you accept your healing now? Say, thank the Lord. Now raise your feet up and down. There you are. Now you can go off the platform. Let's say praise be to God. Hallelujah. He's here. He's here to heal the sick and afflicted. Don't you believe that? Now, how many here wants to be prayed for tonight? How many wants to be prayed for? I want Brother Lindsay or some of them to come here. I want to deal with this woman here. This woman is, is she keeps turning her head sideways. You can't tell her because she can't hear her. I want to find out why that spirit won't leave her. And how many will want to be prayed for now? Just hold up your hand and say, Brother, I want to be prayed for and I believe Jesus with all my heart. Do you believe with all your heart? Do you believe he's sure to make you well, every one of you? All right. I'll tell you what I want you to do. How many Christians is in the building? Let's see, around the building, let's see your hand. All believe in divine healing. All right. I want you, the sick, just the sick ones that want to be prayed for, stand up. You that sick, it can stand up. You that can. Now, Christians, I want you to look how many sick people there is. And I, I want each one of you sick people to lay hands on one another. Lay your hands on one another. All right, that's right. That's fine. Oh, my. You believe, honey, with all your heart? You believe, honey, with all your heart? You do? You accept him as your healer now? You, brother? All right, while everybody's in one accord, let's have prayer. Brother Lindsay, I want all the ministers, if they will, to come out here in front. The ministers that believe in divine healing, I want you to walk out here just a moment. This is for a purpose now. See the prayer. Maybe while you're attacking their prayer, I can see what's wrong here. You see, putting up a barge here between the audience and this woman here where I'm going to. Oh, that's just fine. Look at the ministers believe in divine healing. Let's say praise the Lord. Good. That's fine. If you believe God, you have to believe in divine healing, don't you? That is true. All right. Now, let's everyone bow our heads while we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we believe you now to be the great Jehovah God that led the children of Israel in the wilderness. We believe that you're here to make well every person that has need of healing. You see their hands on each other. Lord, there's been something in this woman behind me tonight that I can't find out, and I know that you will show it to me. I know you will, Father. I believe you, and I pray that you'll surround us with your spirit, and let me see to this woman just what's wrong. Oh, eternal God, bless these handkerchiefs here. Heal all that's represented in these handkerchiefs. Make them everyone well. Those people out there, Lord, you see their hands laid on one another. You know all about them. And Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you will heal every one of them. 
may the power of Satan turn them loose right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, may that selling, ungodly, demon spirit leave, come out of the people. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's right, accept it. Believe it with all your heart. Now look at the people being healed, raising up around. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah, Christian. Accept it. Believe it. With all your heart. Do you, sister, believe it? You there with the cancer. Jesus Christ just made you whole. That's right. You with the nerve trouble. God healed you. That's right. Move your glasses. That's the way it is, sister. There you are. Going blind. Both eyes crossed. There she is, normally and healed. Let's say praise the Lord. You're being healed, friend. What about it there, brother? You believe with all your heart. What about you, brother? You believe with all your heart. Accept it. How do you feel about the trouble? You feel it's gone? Accept it. That's right. And be healed. God bless you, brother. How many in here accept it with all your heart right now? Accept healing. Let's give God praise. When I go to see this woman here, let's see what's wrong. Let's say praise the Lord. I now believe in divine healing. I accept you, Lord Jesus, as my healer just now. Oh, Father, grant the spirit of Satan has bound these people to leave them. Just now, may the Holy Spirit take over their lives and make each one of them well. In the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, 